Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. Melissa and I are thrilled to have you here with us today. It is game day, game night at our house. We have people coming over to play games this evening. And one of the things that we're going to have out for people to snack on is caramelized onion and bacon dip. Now, this is a very simple dip to put together, but it's really good. It's something you can put together pretty fast and it's something that people always enjoy. Let's talk about what goes into caramelized onion and bacon dip. Of course, we have to have bacon, and we're going to use six slices of bacon that we will fry with one large onion chopped. Now, this is about one cup, maybe just a hair over a cup, but it's, a, it's about one cup of onion. Um, if you use one medium or one large onion, it'll be fine. It doesn't have to be exactly one cup. We're also using 16 ounces of sour cream. We're going to use two tablespoons approximately of chives that we just snip um, with a pair of scissors. It just, you know, chop them up a little bit. You can do it with a knife, but I find that it's easier just to snip them with a pair of scissors. We're also going to use half a cup of cheese. Now this is where you can be a little creative. The original recipe that I got probably 20, 25 years ago called for mild cheddar. And that's what I used for a long time. But then I had a different cheese in the refrigerator one time and I thought, why wouldn't I just use this? And since then, we've tried all kinds of cheeses in this, and they all work. So use whatever you have. We've used mozzarella. One of my favorites is pepper jack. We've used Fiesta blend. We've used Monterey jack. You can put just about any cheese you want to in here, but you're going to need about a half a cup of shredded cheese. We're also going to put in just a little bit of salt and pepper. I usually don't measure that, I just put a pinch, but probably a little less than a quarter of a teaspoon. Then we're going to use two tablespoons of Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning. If you have packets, that's one packet. If you have it in a tub like this, it's about two tablespoons. And then of course you're gonna need some things to dip in it, carrots, tomato, celery, uh, broccoli, potato chips, snow peas, just whatever you like, whatever you want to use for a dip. All right, I'm going to start by snipping my chives. And like I said, if you want to use a pair of scissors and cut them, chop them up that way, you certainly can. But it's pretty easy just to snip them. And I'm just going to get those ends off there. And then I will just snip those right into my bowl. We need about a um, tablespoon, tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons. It depends on how much you want. How much do you like chives? You can put in as much or as little as you want. This is your dish. You make it yours. And you can chop it up as fine or as large as you'd like. That is totally up to you. Just make it your way, whatever you like you can do. If you don't like chives, then, you know, leave them out. You don't have to use them. There's nothing that says you have to do that. Okay, so we've gotten those done. I'm going to move all that out of the way. And now we're going to do our bacon. Now, we have to cook our bacon and our onions. So we're going to go over to our skillet, and we're going to Turn our fire on and start cooking this bacon. And as soon as we get it started cooking, then we're going to add in our onions and let them start cooking. Got a head start on us. Yeah, I did the first three just so everybody wouldn't have to watch me do six pieces of bacon. It takes a little while to cut these up. So I thought if I got a head start, that would help everybody. Now you are gonna need something to stir these with. So get you out a big spoon. I think it's much easier if you use a nonstick skillet, but that's not necessary either. But just 
something that you can do it in. You could even do this in a saucepan if you want. There's no reason you couldn't use a saucepan for it. Just some way over the heat, chop up your bacon. If you don't have a pair of kitchen scissors, then use a knife. Get out a cutting board and a knife and I'm gonna turn it down just a hair. And just cut up your bacon. Now, if you want to fry your bacon whole, if you wanna do strips of bacon and then after it's cut, you chop it up, that works too. I just find it's easier for me to cut the bacon up with a pair of kitchen scissors before it's fried. Then once it's finished frying, I can just drain it and I'm ready to go. And you know, it's easier just to stir bacon as it fries rather than have to flip long pieces. And Usually if I have to fry bacon, I always do it this way. I never do the long pieces anymore. Okay, so let's get that started and I'm gonna go get the onions and put in with it. All right, let me grab those onions. Now that bacon is going to give off quite a bit of grease and that will help cook the onions. So just let that bacon fry. You can already see the grease that's coming in the bottom of the skillet. So we're just going to let that fry. Now, once it is fried, we're going to put this on a paper towel lined plate and let it drain because we need all that grease off the bacon and onions before we put it in the dip. You don't want greasy dip. So we're just going to drain that really well. I like to use a paper plate with paper towels on it because what the paper towels don't soak up, a paper plate will. But you drain it the way you want to. Just make sure that once it's fried, you do drain it really well. You want all that grease out of it. Okay, we're gonna fry it. Then once the bacon and onions are fried and caramelized, then we can just put them in the bowl. We will add everything else and this goes quick. We're just going to add the sour cream. You need to mention also, we need to mention that the bacon and the onions, we gave them time to cool. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, you don't want to put hot bacon and onions in with your sour cream and cheese. So yes, they did cool. In with our chives. Half a cup of cheese. And we're going to add in some salt and pepper. Just a pinch of pepper. And finally, our ranch dressing mix. There's one and two. And of course, once you taste it, you can adjust the ranch dressing. If you want more, then you can always add more. Same with the salt and pepper. If you want to add more salt and pepper, you can do that. Absolutely up to you. Now, after this is mixed up, you do want to refrigerate it and it will need to stay refrigerated until you're ready to serve it. It probably would be best if you give it at least an hour in the refrigerator before you serve it, just so that it can kind of firm up and those flavors can marry and kind of blend together. But for the purposes of this video, and I know somebody on our page posted a comment and said, real cooks don't bang their spoons on their bowl. Well, I do. <laughs> Sorry, I do. I want it all off there. Okay, so I think I'm going in with a chip first. You ready for a bite, babe? I love one. I'll give you the whole chip. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Should have stuck that whole thing in her mouth. 
It's really good. That is so good. Wow. I think I'm gonna do a carrot too. Mmm. You can taste the bacon and onion just a little bit. The Hidden Valley Ranch Mix does give it a good flavor. I may add just a little more of that. That's really good. Let me do a close-up of the... Okay. So people can see what it really looks like. Let me kind of pile it up here. How old your ears? There you go. And of course you need to put it in a nice little bowl that you can put out with your chips and vegetables. All right, I know this was a short one and an easy one, but it's a really good dip. We do appreciate you watching our videos. We would really appreciate if you'd go right below the video, click the thumbs up. And if you've never before, click that subscribe button, the little notification bell and the word all. But most of all, we would really appreciate if you'd hit that share button and share our video to your own page. Remember that right below the video where you see the title of this recipe, if you'll click in that box, that's called the description box, that box will expand. Melissa always puts the written recipe right there for you so it's already written out. And our contact information is right under the recipe. And then of course, there is a place for comments at the bottom of the screen. And we love reading your comments. So feel free to leave us a comment at the bottom. Thanks again for watching. And remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day.